You're walking on lot and it's the third day of the festival. And you see the coolest shirt and you're like, I've never seen anything like that. Where'd you get that, bro? Shop tour bus. Why would you say it like that? On because lot? Why would you be like, yeah, I, you know what? If somebody asked me on lot, that's how I would say it. Okay. That's I cool. would totally say you it. You like should that. go over to shop tour bus and check out all the dope designs that they have. They are Grateful Dead inspired t-shirts that have the song titles told in picture on them. In the most comfortable fabric you will ever feel. That stuff is super soft. And they come in a hand design, one of a kind box with all kinds of extras on the inside. And some of you might even get a Grateful Dead cassette bootleg bootleg miracle in your box. That's right. That is some heady shit right there. That's a cool package to receive. I'm just saying. I mean, I don't know of a more heady You're just like going along your average day. You reach in the mail. Boom. You pop out this cool box. And it's a surprise from somebody that loves you, that knows about Shop Tour Bus, well, you knows you like them. cool shit. No, this is a present. Oh, okay. They reach in, see this box, open it up, and then they get a freaking bootleg. They pull out their secret cassette player from, they don't even remember 1974. where. 1974. Put in that cassette and like, oh shit, my friend went to this show. And starts listening, you starts dancing. You put on dancing. your shirt and, and the whole thing happens. Can you just imagine? Smoke a joint. Can you it's just on. imagine? Go to shoptourbus.com and when you do, put in the promo code No, no Simple, Simple Road. Road. All one word. And you're going to get free shipping from the family over at Shop Tour Bus. Some of you are headed out into the great beyond out there in the wider world to go see shows at venues you've never been to before. And wouldn't it be cool if like somebody could give you the lowdown on all of that? Heck yeah, because when we went to the Sphere, we didn't have any intel. No. The only intel we had was that what we remembered from Vegas, but we had no idea about this venue, Mm -mm. how they let people in, that you could get there from the certain casino or not. We didn't know. But you know what? Let me tell you something. What? Go over to VenueLama.com and they have all the inside info on all the venues over there. And it's from... Well, not all. Well, a lot lot. of the inside info on a lot of the venues. Sorry. There you go. Uh, And the info that's up there is from all of us. So it's the fans making the information that's important to us available on VenueLama.com. Stuff like, you know, the security dicks at that venue. Does the water stations not exist at that venue? Can you bring a bag or a chair? Or where can I go eat after or before the show? What's the lot scene like? Those kind of things that are important to folks like us that love to go to shows. Over at VenueLama.com. Yeah, you can quickly rate venues and share various tips and intel about those places. And you can go over there and sign up for your free Llama account and start rating and sharing your insider venue info today. Check this out. Llamas can also list their favorite scene-friendly businesses, websites, or podcasts on the Venue hey, Llama podcast page. So you could be like, yo, I love going to the Sphere and No Simple Road Rules. You could say something like that. You could. What else could they say? Uh, I love going to Red Rocks and Best Show Ever is my favorite podcast. That, that would be such an easy, cool thing to say. <laughs> easy. Just, it would take it no time. It just kind of falls off the lips. And it yep. fe- you already feel that way. <laughs> right. I also, can I just say, Venue Llama, so much better than going to like Reddit for like your oh, yeah. like venue news. Because, you know, anything flies on there and you, get, you have to weed through some weird... So Venue Llama, it feels like you're talking to fans about the, the venue you're going to. Right. Makes you right. feel better. Totally. Okay. So New venue anxiety. Don't you want to feel better? Don't you want to have less venue anxiety? Go yeah. to VenueLlama.com. NBA. Sign oh. up for your free Llama account. <laughs> anxiety free. Show going just for you. VenueLlama.com. Shopify grows your business no matter how far or big you grow. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. 
No Simple Road. Yeah, here we go. I know the road may seem to go on forever and a lifetime. Oh. Darwin's already getting in trouble. We haven't even, I just pushed the button. Darwin's already getting in trouble. He's all up in the space of, I hate when he gets so close <laughs> to the like equipment and well, he's like mom, breathing all the hard. Show too. He can't stand it. He got left out for a little while. Yeah, yeah he, he, he beside he himself out. when I came home. Hey now, No Simple Road family. This is Aaron. This is Apple. And it smell. And it smell. <laughs> it smell. It smell. I, I have to sneeze and like it just. <laughs> and it, and it, it came and to it, it came to me too it quick. Smell. <laughs> it smell. And we are here for another episode of No Simple Road. Our guest this week is none other than Chris Jones from the band Wolf, Wolf Jet. Jet. Apple say it, say it. Wolf Jet. Yeah, okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> Wolf, W O L F, and then Jet, this is important, is J E T T. That's right, man. Music. Are you sure it's not Wolf Jet? I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it. <laughs> Just messing Shut with up. Uh, yeah, we, we have to thank. A member of the No Simple Road Aww. family for this one, Billy yeah. Kramer. Billy. Thank you so much for turning us on to Wolf Jet and for introducing us to their music and to Chris. And uh, I am super stoked for the wider No Simple Road family to get to know Chris and Wolf Jet. You guys yeah. are going to be stoked. This, yeah. is an, this is an amazing story. That's uh, what I was uh, say, of, yeah. of, perseverance it, trials and tribulations and perseverance and getting through it to put out this amazing new album that is out now time will finally come you can go to their website also wolfjet.com you can order merch you can order lp you, you can do all the things all the things and yeah with a positive attitude i mean all that stuff with a nice attitude it, that's incredible. I can't wait. That's for like your video. favorite thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Tragedy bes, bes, befalls upon them and still smiling. and Because that just shows the type of strength. I, you know, if I didn't, if I wasn't raised with Susie my whole life, <laughs> then it probably wouldn't matter to me. But like everything was like a nag or like, oh, I missed a bus. Oh, they didn't have milk. Oh, they didn't look at my hair is like, oh, my God. Like everything was such a nag and a big deal. So when somebody can go through literally burning the house down and earthquakes and fires and and still come out with a sweet attitude, I have mad respect for that. Yeah, man. Yeah. And as Apple always says to you, I'm going to steal his thunder this week. Go go on YouTube. And yeah, check out their jam in the van. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yep, and yeah, they got a few. They got a few uh, full full shows up there as well. And then if you are in Northern California area, you are in luck because that's where they're hitting on their tour dates right now. August third, they're going to be at Jerry Bash, twenty twenty four, Nevada City, California, and then they're bouncing all over Placerville, Chico, Tahoe City, Kings Beach. Uh, June Lake, Navarro, and Redding. Okay. And after you listen to the episode, um, I, I would urge you to go over to YouTube and check out Wolf Jet's video for Garden of Pain. Um, you you got to listen to the episode first to understand the full scope of what you're seeing in the video. But once you do, you will understand what incredibly resilient and magical human beings these are to do what they did with that video and the song and all of it <laughs> um so yeah i'm gonna stop talking about what you're gonna hear and we're gonna do the business yeah and then we're gonna get you to the episode so follow, follow us, us on instagram yeah at no simple road and then when you're done scrolling and looking around there, you can go to www.nosimpleroad.com and hit up our website, which has so many things like you can book a tarot reading with Aaron and I. We do that and it's fun and it's an hour long and you get a playlist, you get 
pictures of the cards and you get to ask questions and spend time with us. And that's really fun and cool. Mm -hmm. You can what? NSR merch. NSR merch. So that thug life. That's right. Um, (laughs) Also, I don't know if you all know this, but no simple road does cost a buck a month. Um, it is the honor system over here because I don't have time to go check and make sure all of you have paid. But the way that you pay that dollar a month is you go to patreon.com forward slash no simple road, sign up as a patron. And what you get is all the episodes ad, the Friday episodes ad free and a day early. You get um, a bunch of different people in the no simple road family are doing picks. Our, our archivist Connor is doing Grateful Dead and Jerry Garcia band picks. Uh, Andrew is doing the wider jam scene, picking filet mignon cuts out for there. I'm just doing random things, whatever I'm watching, listening to, or, you know, that just random stuff from Apple. I'm putting up the stuff that really is, gets me off. So yeah, Mel's doing her thing over there once in a while. Once in a while. And <clears throat> that is patreon.com forward slash. No and, and if you want to step it up to five bucks a month, you get one of those lost sailor, badass keychains. Yeah, no yeah. simple road keychain. They are sick leather custom. Everyone is different. And while supplies last, if you sign up for five bucks, you get a dope ass leather lost sailor leather keychain. Okay. And what else? We're going to do 971-808-1524, and that is the No Simple Road Tepid Line, tepid line. Oh, where yeah. you can leave a review of a show because summer's in full swing. People are back at festivals. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. So be like Brandon. Yeah. And we're going to play that here. Just a second. Brandon, down in Eugene again. I want to try this one more time. It was way harder than I thought it would be when I called the first time. (laughs) The story in my head has so many parts and sounds hilariously funny. You guys are really good at what you do, kind of what I'm saying. You make it sound so easy. (laughs) So I guess really all I'm going to say is I'm excited for FAIR. Your guys' recap about FAIR is something I've listened to twice in the last two work weeks, just getting excited for FAIR. Um, Yeah, it's awesome. Can't wait to be there. (laughs) And hope I don't see any of you or me in Whitebird. Let's party without that. Have a good one. No, no. <laughs> Brandon. None, not, well, Ish. none of the three of yeah. us went yeah. to Whitebird. We didn't, we but, didn't go to uh, Whitebird. Our, our friend that we brought along had an experience with Whitebird. Uh, and and yeah, uh, if you want to hear about that, you can listen to the to the uh, weekly rewind this week, and we talk a little bit about that. Um, also, we got another one. No! Simple! <laughs> road! Because it's not a highway. It is a road. It is a road. The highway road. is pretty fast. Johnny B. calling from the great state of Delaware. I hope you can hear me because all we got is cornfields and not that many cell towers. Um, <laughs> listen to the Bodie Mojo recap, and that sounded amazing. I cannot wait till I get to go. To Bodie Mojo Fest in person one day, which will happen. Um, that sounded like a blast. It was. I love hearing all the Oregon community growing and getting together and just fun festival shenanigans. Just wait, John. Um, I'm also calling because last week, or not last week, two weeks ago ish, on the Cam uh, episode when Mel and Cam were talking about the trash. And we brought up the um, oh, yeah. green vibes or clean vibes kind of thing that Fish had. Fish does have clean vibes, and there are green scenes and crews at festivals, but it's not like it was back in the day. The crunchy, wookie granola kids from the 2000s, I felt like cared a little bit more about the earth or at least picking up the trash than the newer kids. Absolutely. So I'm going to do a quick little rant. Because, Mel, I care just about the tracks as much as you do. Thank it you, is my freaking thorn in my side. So, everyone, there's something called the tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons means since no one owns all of the public land, people don't care about it and throw their shit on it. Because uh. look at your own lawn. There ain't trash on your own lawn. But somehow when people don't own it and they go to a park, they throw trash on it. Guess what? We all own it. We all own every single square inch of this earth. Fuck which yeah, means... John. Pick up your trash. Thank you. So, I'm starting a 501 <gasps> CC nonprofit, and it's basically going to be called 
Someone's got to clean that up. <laughs> I fucking clean all the damn trash up. I see when I just walk down the street. I see people put trash on the street in front of me. My 501 cc guess what? All we need is gloves, trash bags. I'll pay this out of my own pocket. And that cool stick. Yes. You see those hobo guys my have when they're picking thing. up trash in like those prison movies? Like I want one of those sticks because those are kind of cool. Other than that, <laughs> you don't need much. All you need is one day off a year. Everyone in Asia takes one day off a year. I will take one day off this year and do nothing but pick trash up. And the city of Philadelphia is freaking disgusting. I'm sorry, all you Philly people, but there's more trash in your city than anywhere else. D.C. and Maryland is not that bad. So I will go to Philly and pick trash up and at Mondegreen. Love you all. Bye. Have a great fair. Oregon, country, motherfucking fair. LPGOB, damn hurt. No simple road, spoken word team. <laughs> wow. Hell Look yeah, John. John. Dude, John, the- I felt like that was specifically for me. I fucking love you. I I've signed me up. Someone's got to clean that up. It, yeah. It's I've got a name tag right here. Yeah. Mel Mel always says, "I just want the stick." That's I. That's what I'm saying. The stick, one little bag, and yes, a vinyl glove. Like, oh, it's gross. Let me pick it up with my glove. I'll wear my glove after the concert's over to pick up all the trash that I see on the way out. And then here's the trash can and my little cute little tied up trash bag of all the gross cups, nasty napkins, weird straws and stuff that I pick up. Okay. Well, there it is. That's 971-808-1524. Everybody, you you too can call in and do do that. With, with yeah. what, what, whatever level of enthusiasm you have, yeah. John's yeah. is hard to match. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. That's a, yeah. that's a, but we dare you. Yeah, you. The gauntlet has been thrown down. Uh, also, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever podcast player you are listening to. No simple road on. No, it is not our egos that is asking you to do that. No, it is the algorithm that is asking you to do it. Well, it's me asking you to do it because of the algorithm. That's how other people find out about the show, and. The most important thing you can do is tell somebody you love about No Simple Road. And I say that every week, and I had an epiphany the other day. I found out about The Grateful Dead, not from social media. I found out about The Grateful Dead from a buddy that was like, hey, man, have you ever listened to The Grateful Dead? And I was like, yes, and I hate them. But that's neither here nor there. That's how I found out about The Grateful Dead and how I ended up at a show. And that's how you find out about the things you love the most in your life is from the people that you know and love telling you about it. And that's how the mycelial network of the No Simple Road family grows and spreads. It's from one brain into an ear, into that brain. And Share what you love. Explosions of love. Yes, that's how it happens. And that's that. And even with somebody you don't like. They need it more. <laughs> I've said too. that once in a while. It's like, you know, somebody you may be on the outs with, like, hey, listen to this, man. Still thinking of you. That's right. So that's the things, all the things, the, the socials and the call-ins and the Patreons and all that. And now the doodads, we're, we're going to do the, the real thing and get you to the interview. Without further ado, the No Simple Road crew gives you Chris, Chris Jones of Wolf Jet. So stressed, been open for a breakthrough, but I haven't found one yet. Life's little problems keep me on the daily grind. I keep giving more than getting, keep settling for less. I can't be worried.
guy. Yay. Sorry about that. I didn't get the email and I was like running around looking for all your info and stuff and I, he just didn't show up. So it's, it, it might be my fault. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy. Oh, no. It's important that we apportion blame. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, what's up? I'm Aaron, man. Hey, Aaron. Nice to meet you. Nice uh, to meet you, my too. My buddy Billy says hi- hello. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. That, is, that is one good human being Send right there. Send him our love, too. Um, my yeah. name is Mel Crisp. So nice to meet you. Thanks hey, for taking Mel. some time with us today. And then, yeah. And then you got the third guy here. I'm Apple. And thanks for uh, joining us today, Apple. Chris. <laughs> How's it going? Great. Where are you at, Chris? Uh, I live in Boulder Creek. California, if you know where that is, it's near Santa Cruz. Yeah, um, okay. close to city. Are you guys uh, dealing with like rolling blackouts or brownouts and all that stuff down? No, down there? not right now. We're we we got pretty lucky. It was really hot here. It's over a hundred degrees every day for the last few days. Um, usually they shut the power down, so I was surprised they didn't shut it down this time. And um, now I'm living in a house instead of a trailer, so that's also nice because yeah. I actually can stay cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I I mean, I don't want to talk about weather and power, but I got it. They shut your power down. They do all the time. Yeah. During the summers, usually they shut it down. This is the first year they have it. That's crazy. Do you get warnings? Yeah. yeah you get like a a thing, a text, and it says, you know. You're fucked. Just so you know, <laughs> we'll be shutting down your power for how long we don't know, as long as we need to. And then we'll just put it back up. And then, then, then in the winter, it went down, I think for 10 days last winter, it just went down. Uh, it'll just go down like, yeah, you know, all, all the time. And sometimes it's not even for any real reason. They're just working on the power lines what and they have to protect the, the workers. And what? so, okay. It's a savage environment. Yeah. <laughs> man. That sounds like it. Well, we, yeah. we actually, uh, we just watched the video that you guys made after the fire. Oh yeah, oh, wait, you know. Before we get into it, we should have Chris. Yeah, oh yeah. That, we we that always just rush in the conversation. If you introduce yourself to our listeners, so they know okay. who we're talking to and what you do. Okay, my name is Chris Jones. I'm from the band Wolf Jet. Uh, we are a uh, rock and roll folk indie Americana <laughs> blues song yes. project out of Santa Cruz Mountains and. Um, and yeah, just happy to be here on No Simple Road. Thanks for having me. Oh, awesome. Absolutely. Right on. Yeah, 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 we we just got done watching the video of of the aftermath of that whole thing, yeah. man. So uh, we'll get into it. But I, in reading about you guys, you started r- like in 2019, towards the end of 2019. Yeah. So the the story goes that in 2019, I was living in Manhattan. And prior to that, I had been traveling. I, I used to live in San Francisco. I did uh, I did 14 years in San Francisco in the Mission. Oh, and wow. okay. John has been living down in Boulder Creek. He bought a house in 2019 in Boulder Creek. Um, and so what happened was we were playing gigs and going back and forth between the city and all this stuff. And I just got burned out. And I went and lived in Spain and Portugal for a year, which is a whole other story. You mm-hmm. can get into it if you want. But um uh, fast forward to 2019, I'm living in Manhattan, um, in up, Upper West Side, and John's living out here in Boulder Creek. And what happened was, like, you know, he's just like, let's start a musical project. You can do an East Coast musical project, and and this will be our West Coast one. And so we had just started it for fun, and I was coming out every other month. I would fly out there. I would work. Uh, I could get some jobs and work out on the West Coast, and so... Um, you know, and he had, we, we had been working towards, you know, recording a record all through that year. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the record got done and was finally printed in March, 2020, um, was when I got the CDs, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah, the same old story for every, everybody had that happen to them. That's not (laughs) right. (laughs) It's just kind of crazy to still think about like how everybody I feel like it was going for like this new level or in some new beginning right yeah. at March, 2020. <laughs> like what? It was the- awesome. I put all my money in this record <laughs> and you know, I, I just rolled the dice on it. I, we, we got a bunch of awesome musicians and like paid them and paid a, um, a producer and a mixer and, 
you know, an engineer and a mastering engineer. We did all the things that you're supposed to do to make a record. And we're like, we're going to do it right this time because, you know, John and I, John is the drummer, John Payne. Mm -hmm. um, we've been playing a band since we were 11 years old. So we, oh, wow. we, we came up together. We had another band in San, in Santa Cruz, in San Francisco and Santa Cruz called um, Scary Little Friends, which actually Billy Kramer was an original member of. Okay. What? And I used to live with Billy we, Kramer. So we have stickers. that's how the connection goes there. Yeah, Billy gave <laughs> us some stickers from that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Bill and John and I all went to high school together in Burlingame. So we have this long history of playing music together and we're old friends. So we've been working on projects off and on for years, um, pretty much on. And this was the one where we're like, we're going to do this right. We're going to do all the best songs from all the years. And we're going to have the right aesthetic. We're really going to like come at it from a really thoughtful perspective instead of just ragtag group of hungry musicians, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, uh, and it was, it was working. I mean, we were, we got really good musicians to be in the band from the very beginning and that was a huge move, you know, to get really good people, um, two of which are still in the band today. And, you know, it's like, so, yeah, we just had everything going right for us in 2019. I was in a very good place. Okay. So, so <laughs> then you finish the album, you get, you get the stuff and yeah. COVID happens. Yeah. And we cancel everything. And obviously. everything's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. all your money's in the project. And yeah. And, uh, and so my girlfriend at the time was living in Manhattan and she left Manhattan. Okay. And I left Manhattan too. Cause I was like, I went down to visit my parents at the end of February. They live in East Tennessee. So I was down in Tennessee when, you know, like I, I remember flying out of the airport and people wearing masks. I remember that. And then I remember not being able to fly back. So I kind of got oh, stuck shit. in Tennessee for a few uh... months and then my rent was up and I was like, what am I going to do? And my girlfriend was like, I'm not going back to New York. And I was like, well, I'm not going back to New York. But <laughs> if you're not going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, living with my parents was, was, uh, it's always cool. I like my family, but I was like bored out of my mind. So John called me and John's like, Hey man, um, <laughs> what if you like came over to California to Boulder Creek and I, you know, we have that basement. I will clean it out and we'll build a studio. I've got a carpenter to do the carpentry and you and I'll just build our dream studio. Like we've been trying to do since we were little kids. So we spent from June until August building this incredible studio. It was awesome. We had, you know, <laughs> Leslie speaker. We had a whirly. We had um, John had four drum sets. I brought a bunch of my Holy recording gear. We had a tape machine. We had two tape machines, one that had belonged to Tom Waits Another one oh that was a God. Tascam 3D8, if you know what that is. Yeah. Super geeky, awesome, all analog studio. And we had it perfectly dialed in. And we just started hitting record on the tape. And we cut a couple tunes. And I remember looking out the window. John come, came in. I remember it was really hot. And we had a lightning storm. So the lightning had happened the night before until 6 in the morning. It was like these crazy lightning flashes all night long, if people remember that. Yeah. In August. And uh next thing you know, uh the 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 whole valley just turned red. Oh shit. So I looked out the window and within like three or four hours that I'd just been sitting in there like doing overdubs and working in the studio, it had gotten progressively redder and redder and darker until finally John goes like, look out the window. And I looked out the window and it was we literally walked out the oh. front door of the studio and a helicopter came flying over our heads. And it just from a uh, loud, they had like a megaphone and they were screaming into the megaphone, evacuate immediately. Your life is in danger. Oh my God. Be Holy with shit. all of your animals and your family immediately. Do not stay. Your life is in danger. And they were flying through the valley over every house and stopping at every house and yelling that. Okay, wait, hang on. Oh Hold my on. God. I got, I got, we got to pause here. I got a question. So. <laughs> I've often wondered, I, I lived, I used to live in Malibu and okay. in, in the mid eighties and there was a, if you remember like back then there was a huge Malibu fire that happened mm -hmm. and same thing, like the hill that was behind us it was like red, then the sky got dark, then you could see 
<clears throat> you could see the flames coming down the hill. Right. And I remember the fire department <clears throat> driving up and down the street saying, get out of your houses. Your lives are in danger. Leave. You got to go now. Take everything. Right. And my dad was like, fuck that. We're not leaving. And I remember him like standing <laughs> with a hose spraying the roof of the house. And we, we did stay and it turned out all right. But yeah. it, when that happens happened to you guys, were you like, we're out? You know, any way that we can help get an edge in today's world with our mental health and our spiritual well-being and our inner world, we, we need to take it, man. And yeah. our sponsor, Melt Mushrooms, is the perfect place to go to get a little bit of that relief, that edge, that comfort, that thing that yeah. we're, we all need. That's so fine-tuning. Right? Yeah man so here's what you're gonna do go follow at melt, melt mushrooms on instagram and then you're gonna dm them and be like hey no simple road sent me they're gonna be like you know what here's our menu here's about 10 chocolates three different types of gummies and if you don't like any of that flavored stuff or you don't want the calories then you can just get the little capsules yep and for the month of July, you're going to get buy one, get one half off for being part of the No Simple Road family. So not only are you getting a little bit of that, you know, comfort and relief from the outside world, tuning up your inside world, but you're also saving some dough and getting some extra stuff on the on the back end. That's so right. Go follow at Melt Mushrooms, M-E-L-T-M-U-S-H-R-O-O-M-S. And like Mel just told you, shoot him a DM, tell him we sent you, get buy one, get one half off. 10 different flavors, gummies, singles, capsules, the whole deal. Go check it out. Yeah, the initial response was literally I grabbed my backpack, three guitars. There was a cat and three dogs oh on the property. God. We just grabbed them all. And we threw them into two different cars and we bolted. And then we got to like, there's like a golf course down the road and we got there we kind of caught our breath and then we went down to uh, Felton and we stayed with our band member, Laura T. Lewis and our friend Denny's house for the night. But as it dawned on us, we realized that it wasn't happening so quickly. The reason that they evacuated everyone was because there's only two ways in and out. Mm. There's the North way or the way out up highway 236, And then there's the way down through Boulder Creek. They were afraid the road was going to get blocked and all those people would be caught and there's no other way out. There's like oh one God. road in and out to that main road. So if the fire had crossed that road, which it didn't do um, immediately, uh, all those people, including us, would have been stranded. So it was a little bit premature. So what we did was John woke up first thing in the morning and we took like three trips back and forth. We rescued um, one of our buddies, Euro vans. He had like a best oh. um, We got the trailer we got his double bass. We got like some of the microphones, not all of them. We got what we could. We just yeah. did these mad scrambles up to the property. But I'm telling you, it wow. looked like hell up there. It was like no visibility, smoke just billowing towards you as you were coming in. It's terrifying. And we got out. And then the next day, we got um, started getting word from people uh, because our neighbors did stay. Okay. They are two brothers and they stayed and they were doing exactly what your dad was doing with the fire hose and they were holding the fire hose and the fire hose stopped putting out water. Oh no. And then all of a sudden my, the guy turned around, he told me this story later. He said, I turned around and I saw about 200 rats running in a line oh. down the road, trying to escape the fire. And then all of a sudden I was running to get away from the fire. Cause I heard, propane tanks blowing up and there was fire flames shooting 200 feet in the sky. Um, and he said he stepped on a hornet's nest <laughs> and to add to all this, the hornets <laughs> were e eating him alive. They oh my God. Him. And as this is all happening, the fire department pulls up and he goes, Oh my God, thank God the fire department's here. And they're like, we're not putting the fire out. We just came up here to save you. Because you're too dumb to leave. Oh, oh shit. Like, they're like, get out now. This is like the actual get out or die moment. And when they did that, the next day we got word the whole neighborhood was gone. Oh, God. I mean, it, it completely eviscerated every single house, but two houses survived. 
And it's a miracle they survived because everything else burned and there was no way to save it. Uh, okay. Oh so yeah, water no, there on the like roof, the, nothing well, yeah, was like going to save that. Yeah, at that point, they're well, not going to risk their lives to, yeah. I remember uh, when, I, I I think it was maybe at the same time, like the whole West Coast was on fire, basically. Yeah, it was like 70 fires at once. Yeah, and it, up here at noon. That's, yeah, it when was we had. The, just pitch black sky with a red dot in the sky yeah, from exactly all the fire. It was, it, it really was, seemed it was like, like it, it was the end of the world. Yeah, it felt like the apocalypse. We're in <laughs> lockdown, can't go anywhere, and then the skies <laughs> turn blood red. And You're trapped in your like, house oh, coughing. From yeah. And well, that, oh, yeah. that, too, that reminds me, like, all, like, so many disaster movie, end of the world movie. When you see the animals and the rats, like, booking, you start running with them. Yeah. Like, they know what's exactly. up. The rats exactly. are boogieing. It's time to yeah. go. Yeah. Okay, I so mean, there's been some time between this event clearly and now that you can actually smile and stuff. But like, yeah. what's the feeling like for you and your buddy, especially after that, like <laughs> in your friend's house, like what uh, grabbing your yeah. stuff? Like what? I mean, there was a lot of mourning. There was a lot of sadness. Like, um, you know, it was harder for John because him and his wife had this beautiful home and it was completely destroyed. Um, lucky for them. It only destroyed the house. They had a trailer and a and um and a couple other structures on the property that didn't burn. The rest of the property actually didn't burn. It was just the house because the propane company had come two days before the fire and filled this filled two thousand tank. tank. Oh. And that was beneath a giant oak tree and that had caught fire and it has an escape valve on the top of it. So apparently that was just breathing fire out the top of it for however much fuel, okay. 2,000 gallons of propane, you can imagine. Oh, oh my God. Holy the sh- amount of energy and heat that generated. And then an oak tree, a giant oak tree over the top of it just eviscerated, falling on top of the house. And so three stories caved in. And so what happened for us is John knew some people and we had pulled some strings and we actually got up there like two days after the house burned down. Okay. And, and we're actually on the property during the fires, like when the fires were still happening, we had a fire department person taking us up there and we were in the fires, like literally like there were fires burning all around us. We were putting fires out. We were uh, feeding chickens, um, you know, grabbing any animals that had been left over. Like we were trying to help all of our neighbors and we were like in it. So that was just like an initial, like, just shock of like scorched earth. Like you see the entirety of big base and you're driving through big base and state park. And it's just literally looks like a war zone, like a napalm bomb or like yeah, a yeah. nuclear bomb had gone off. Everything was black and charred and smoking. And, and so that initial era was just about survival. Yeah. I have never felt like that close to my survivor instincts, like being in it. And that kind of helped us because It gave us something to do rather than wring our hands and be upset. Yeah. And then slowly, as we realize, like we get back to the house, it's like, we're going through the rubble. There's nothing left. There's no jewelry. There's no, there's like some pottery. There's like some random artifacts from their house that were like charred and melted. I mean, the the, the guitar amp I had in there that my friend Jeff had given me, it was just the husk of the amp. It was just the, the, I still have it. I pulled it out of the fire, but it's just like, it was like the husk of the amp and I gave it back to him and I said, here's your amp here's back. Your amp back bro. <laughs> Thanks for letting that. me borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what happened, man. I was on fire. See, yeah. Do you- so he lost it. All, John lost all of his, you know, physical memories and all of his possessions. And, and I did too. I mean, I lost a lot of things, but I'm kind of a light traveler. So I, I, I wasn't as affected as they were. Um, his wife has a pottery studio, all of her pottery gone, you know, all oh of her gosh. equipment gone, all of our equipment. Like that was tough. Cause then it's like, well, the stuff we need to like, we were using the house as a place to make music. It was a beautiful recording studio in there. And it was just like a place to practice. And we had quarantine there. So all of a sudden we went from that to living in a hotel in Menlo park. You know, oh like, man and then we like ended up yeah we ended up living in an apartment in santa cruz and every day john and i would just go up to the house and see what we could do you know like 
try to save the weed plants and yeah. try to keep your chickens alive <laughs> and whatever we could do to like keep stuff going. And then over the years, there's been mournful times. There's been quiet times. There's been a lot of reflection. It wasn't funny at first. And then, you know, John isn't here to tell you the, his part of the story, but rebuilding the house has been its own nightmare okay. because Santa Cruz County has like the most strictest building codes in in maybe the nation, I don't know, but it's very intense. And you're talking about building with septic systems. Uh, the water system was completely destroyed. Like all the water was gone. Like there was no water up there for months. Um, so they had to rebuild from the ground up and it was just insane what they had to go through and that they still haven't finished the house. It's still being under construction. It's still under construction. Oh my so. Oh my God. But wow. you're, but you're back up there. Yeah, I, I actually live right down the road. Okay. I actually lived in a trailer on our guitar player's property for three years. And then this year, uh, I had a lovely angel person um, let me live in her home. And Hell so yeah. I'm living in a home just down the street from John's. And we've rebuilt the studio since then. We finally. Oh, wow. Got it going, so. Okay. So, the, uh, wow. The album <laughs> that was finished at, at the beginning of 2020, is that the self-titled Wolf Jet album? Yeah. So that's the okay. original record that was done before 2020. I'm just going to move really quick. Yeah. Um, thing. Sorry. My, my housemates coming home and it's he's okay. Gonna, Do you think he's going to bomb the, uh, <laughs> the session? Here. He's going to bomb the session. <laughs> <laughs> that's one hell of a story. Jesus Chris. Christ. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. is one well, talk about perseverance and like getting through it and stuff, man, that's a lot to deal with. We went I, through six days with no power. We were ready to kill each other. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, this that's, is true. That's not even mentioning the winter of 2021, 22 and and all that stuff because the entire valley had landslides throughout, roads were closed, Highway 17 had landslides. I mean, we were talking no power. John actually was in uh, Arnold and lost power for like 3 weeks or two and a half weeks they lost power in the snow and they got like 15 feet of snow and <laughs> You know, like we've had all this stuff happen and it's like almost seems like a curse. Um, but I think our brand at this point is that, you know, you can't stop us. Like we're just no. like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for, for everybody that that's listening, I, I, I got, you got to go to YouTube. It's garden of, of pain. Of pain. pain. Yeah. yeah. Go, go look up wolf jet with two T's and, and, search garden of pain and they filmed a music video literally in the rubble of the house where the studio was and where whose John idea was that yeah that uh there's a guy named justin kohlberg who is incredible uh musician and and director and and um he got a 16 millimeter analog film camera someone donated i i don't know who but at some philanthropist donated a roll of 16 millimeter film, Whoa. which if you know about 16 millimeter film, one roll is like a thousand bucks mm -hmm. and it only has like seven or eight minutes on this roll. So it was all done on a track, like a literally like a little mini train track, like the old school movies in one continuous shot. And we had three takes max. And we oh. had the T sisters come down for that. And um, so it was a lot of pressure to do it and i remember the first one was okay and we're like oh man the second one we're like okay we got to keep her like that's good enough and then they're like just do one more take and like give it your all and that's the take we end up using oh, and it was yeah. literally like three seconds left on the end of the tape and it just went Ch -ch 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 at the end you know they're perfect like, they're like that's it that's the take and we're wow. like oh my god and so yeah it was it was this thing where this guy justin kohlberg um brought in a whole crew I mean, it was all his vision and he, he just absolutely knew what he was doing. Um, and that made it awesome because all I had to do was show up and play music and that's like <laughs> right. all I'm really good at. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I, I beg to differ. Yeah. 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 Can we, you know, since we're just getting to know each other, you were talking about, you were in Spain and Port Portugal, like, yeah. can you give us a background on, on your musical upbringings and kind of like how you got here? Yeah, so basically, you know, I, I was in a band in San Francisco called Scary Little Friends for 
a few years. And it's ironic because that band started at the same time that Midnight North started. Okay. Like I remember Midnight North when it was still like Graham Lesh and Friends. And I think their first gig that they ever played outside Terrapin was with us. And it was at the Crate Place in Santa Cruz. And for some reason, Nora Jones's boyfriend was playing at the same night. And uh, so Nora Jones showed up and played that gig, oh, which wow. was a pretty awesome gig. Hell yeah. And so that was the beginning of our San Francisco musical scene kind of taking off. And, you know, obviously Midnight North went on to to tour and do awesome stuff. But when they were just starting out, uh, they were one of the bands in our scene. And then we had a bunch of other people in the in the Bay Area. So I, I did many years in the San Francisco music scene. I, I'd been there since 2004. And so... You know, just basically paying dues, but not really having a um, a success of any kind. And then Scared Little Friends just got us enough off the ground where we made a lot of connections. You know, we met the Mother Hips through that, who I obviously idolized. And, and I grew up in California. I grew up in Burlingame for um, most of my adult, young adult life. And so, you know, basically growing up in the Bay Area and living that dream was what I was all about. And then San Francisco, you know, all the changes, all the, the, the gentrification, I was living at 24th the mission. So oh, my wow. window, my bedroom window looked out onto the BART station and I would just see chaos every day. And I loved <laughs> it. It was awesome. <laughs> but, you know, I saw some really intense things and, and some really heavy stuff happen. And, you know, all my friends started moving on and, and kind of getting in their thirties and kind of moving, moving out and getting with girlfriends or boyfriends and everybody just kind of was moving on. And here I am still living this like 20 something year old life in my thirties. And so I just kind of had a breakdown. I went, I was working for a huge, you know, company, which I won't name. Okay. She paid me way too much money to do almost nothing all day. And I just burned out and I basically was like, um, like became like a vegan. I had started meditating. I stopped doing all the drugs. I basically, I went like on a 10 day silent Vipassana retreat. And then I went on the Jamir trail with my dad and hiked that. And then I went to Canada and then I went to Iceland and then I got a one-way ticket to Barcelona. And then when I got to Barcelona, I met, my friend who had a um, uh, artist commune on the coast of S- Spain okay, in, in a town called Aguilas, which is near Murcia, Murcia region, uh, which is like s- Southern coast. So um, basically I lived in this hippie commune for a few months, just busking on the streets for money. And um, then we bought bicycles and traveled all oh throughout God. Southern Spain uh, through the flamenco region of Spain. So, you know, Granada, Sevilla, Cadiz, um, Cabo de Gata. I've seen it all. I've seen the whole coast of Spain. Wow. And then all the southern part of Portugal, which is called the Algarve. And then we made it all the way to Lisbon, which is up. If you hit the end of the southern coast of Europe, you just go up and you go to Lisbon. And that's and I ended up living in a squat there for a few months, a couple different squats. And then I was like, I want to play music again. I'm ready. I'm healed. I feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a band. great journey. <laughs> did you I maintain your, Spanish, your veganism? Uh, less Portuguese. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you maintain your veganism on your trip? I did not because Spain is like a <laughs> pork only. <laughs> it's, it's like wild boar is like the only thing. And they give it to you free with all your beers. You know, the tapas are free with beer. Oh, and a lot wow. of places. So you're just like, what am I going to do? You know, yeah. like, I don't even speak I get Spanish it. well enough. And they <laughs> turn like, it down. They look at you like vegano. Like they're just like, do not know yeah. what that means. Why in- wouldn't you <laughs> eat meat? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're living in like a bicycle in the countryside and People are making food for you. You, you know, somebody hands shit. you paella, you're going to eat paella. You know, yeah. it's like, yes. so I, I've gone back and forth in that over the years. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it's, it's that here. that's well, we, we've <laughs> talked about that. Free. We were just talking the other day about that, like our hit list of places to travel, like Spain is Spain, Portugal. So that's like at the top. top right? the they a lot of people's lists. Yeah. Um, yeah. For good reason. The beer is like 50 cents a bottle. 
Um, you can stay in a hotel for like $12 a night. Um, the people are, you know, they, it's, it's, they're not, they're not like a totally closed culture, but they're not totally like open. So if you go there, you need to like speak Spanish or you need to know something about the culture and then the world will open up to you a little bit. So all you need is a basic understanding of Spanish and, and some, some yeah. understanding of like Franco, like fascism and the history of Spain. And then you, you're you in can make friends, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. and, and I met wonderful people on my journeys and, and travels and some not wonderful people too, but you know, most of the people were that I met were kind and generous and brought me into their homes. And, and you know, when you're living your best life, and you're traveling like that, you just find energy and you find yeah. people and you, you find a way, especially when you're desperate. Yeah. And were were you playing music still during that time? Like, did you yeah, have, like so my friend is a, is a musician. His name is, uh, is uh, Joe Mackamer. He now lives in Portugal, but he's from Oregon and he oh. grew up in slow. So he played in a band called dark skies for years who Billy knows. I actually know him through Billy Kramer. Okay. And, and so <laughs> another guy that, wonderful guy and um so we were busking every day for money mm -hmm. i didn't spend any money the whole time i was in spain or portugal because we would just sleep and they don't have guns there so you can just sleep wherever like nobody's <laughs> gonna kill you <laughs> yelling, it's not like the united states you're not gonna get shot <laughs> yeah. and we're both like we're both like savages i mean we would sleep anywhere he even more than me would sleep anywhere. Like literally I remember like nights where be like, I'm tired of riding the bike. There's a ditch, like just run the bike into the ditch and <laughs> see that tree right there. We'll just set up under that tree right by the road. And we would, we would just do that stuff. And I remember one night we actually hiked into this field to sleep in it. We had all of our bikes and everything and it was fenced, but we like snuck over the fence and we we're in this field. And I'm like stepped in something, but it was kind of dark and it was cow shit. And I look up and there's a magnificently huge bull with horns oh, fuck. just sitting, staring at us from oh. like a hundred yards away or not even that, probably a hundred feet, like pretty close. And we just froze in our tracks and I'm like, Joe, what the hell are we going to do? And he's just like, just back up. Yeah. So Backed up through that field with our bikes and we got back and then and then we at one point it started moving towards us and he's like ditch your bike and run <laughs> oh my God. time to go man <laughs> yeah. yeah you know what so you, you, you can't pay for that of the bulls but not <laughs> yeah. the people the people are you know they're pretty benign i would say like they don't feel there isn't a feeling of like if you step on my property i'll, I'll murder you yeah I, there is that here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah there's like, a, sorry. I had the wrong address. I didn't. <laughs> no, oops. you're dead. Now. I was turning around. Shit. Damn tweakers. Uh, after yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah, you overlooked the BART station. You know all about it <laughs> for sure. So, okay. So the, you get the, the album out, everything's rebuilt. So what's going on now? So, okay. So the next three years, have been like just playing as many shows as possible and getting our chops together. And, you know, and, and um, it's been tons of playing shows, just okay. as many shows as we can get out there. And we had built all these songs up and we tried to make a, a record in 2021 and that just wasn't working. Fast forward to 2022, we, we opened for Brothers Comatose at um, Mo's Alley and they were uh, taping the recordings and the guy doing the taping was Jonathan Kirshner. And if you know who Jonathan Kirshner is, he's in a band called Cumbrio, okay. which has been around San Francisco and Oakland for many, many years. They've been 15 years deep, probably. Uh, they've had several different singers, uh, but John is a producer. He, he worked, he worked at the rainbow girls, King dream, um, Royal jelly jive, mm. pretty much anybody in the Bay area. That's like, in that scene, uh, Kelly McFarling, he's done a bunch of stuff with her, who's one of my favorite San Francisco uh, singers and, and songwriters. So anyways, Jonathan and his wife, and, and we had met because his wife wrote for the San Francisco Chronicle, he used to live down the street from me. Um, she wrote an article about the fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So they actually came to the house after the fire and saw everything. And Jonathan was there. And so we already knew him. And we said, hey, Jonathan, like, would you work with us on a on a record? And he said, I'd love to. And we immediately went up there. And I remember we got Jason Crosby randomly was just off the road. Jason plays with Jackson Brown mostly. Yeah. Um, but he's a legend. Amazing. Just a savant. And so we had him come in for the first day of recording. And as soon as we got in there, we were so prepared. We had spent three years sessioning these songs and we just got in there and it just like from the moment we hit record, it was like amazing, just an amazing experience working with uh, Jason, working with Jonathan Kirshner. Um, and he just kind of took us under his wing. And when we found him, the sound of the band started changing. Cause he was like, y'all like sound good, but when you try this, like your, your lap steel player will, he's like kind of shy. Like, Let's just like sneak behind and turn up the amp when he's not looking. <laughs> or, or how about Laura sings that part three times and like really high, really low. And then one whisper and, you know, he was trying all these really cool production techniques that he kind of patented his own style. And that was when the band like started getting a little bit more focused, I would say. Okay. And it became more danceable. Like we were a folk band from the beginning we had a stand-up bass player but then we got duncan shipton who's now the the electric bass player and it just became way more dance but we started playing with like the hips and neighbor and you know we met all these other bands and they're all like groove session they're all like we're looking at them and like people are dancing from the first song and we love psychedelic music i'm not gonna say that i love all jam band music right but i definitely like have a long history with it you know, I used to go to big woo shows and, oh yeah, you know, and like, I've seen the slip a bunch of times, you know, I'd like, I was super into it in different times in my life. And I, and we all love the grateful dead. Uh Oh, we got a thumbs I don't, down. Why, we, I, I don't, we don't understand we don't, how it, it happens. We don't, like it doesn't have anything to do with us. We, oh, ha- I thought, I thought somebody was just mad at me. No, 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 no one's mad no, at you. Yeah. yeah there's but, no, there's but maybe watching. I think maybe because you did this and maybe because you, it, Put your thumb it, down. I don't know. We, we haven't figured it <laughs> out. Still- that wasn't that bad. We had it happen like a month ago where somebody, I forget we were talking to, they were just, ta- they were talking about a recent death in their family. And it thumbs and up. And it gave a thumbs up and they kind of, pa- we're like, it's not we've us. tried to figure <laughs> out how to turn <laughs> this off. That's, that's the au- ghost of awkwardness. Right? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, really yeah. is. It like, totally thwarts the conversation in a way nobody wants it to go. <laughs> you know what yeah, though? Totally. The, the jam band scene is its own weird animal you know what i mean but and it's so powerful it's so powerful and it really you know, is. one of my favorite bands of all time is my morning jacket um wow. because let's be real i mean they are like they jam so hard yeah and but they have good songs too and i think that that is like a little a little bit more complex than just like we wouldn't fit in in the jam band scene I don't, i'm not a good enough guitar player none of us are really that like skilled as musicians that we just want to like be known for our musicianship so we have to lean more heavily on our vocals and our and our songwriting it shows um and but i have immense like i'm saying what i'm saying is i have immense respect for the jam band scene and culture i grew up with it i know a bunch of people in it and we're playing shows with all these folks and so we're like let's incorporate that music like that's what we grew up with yeah i grew up with the San Francisco dream, you know, like yeah. the Jefferson airplane, the Moby grape, um, Quicksilver messenger service, you know, um, obviously the dead, I mean, done job done. Like that was, yeah. those were my heroes as a kid. Right. End of story, like Bart, you know, full stop. And so, you know, I like incorporating all of that into it. And that's what we did. We just started incorporating that element into our music more. He, and then it evolved. You and, know- and then, once you put Jason Crosby or like Alex Jordan also is like mm-hmm. kind of a auxiliary member of our band, but we met him through midnight North and, and have known him for years and he's family. That's a and, great dude. Um, yeah. You know, he's an incredible, like he, he knows the jam band scene better than anybody, you know? And so he, um, he adds that to our music and yeah. So it's just kind of a cool addition because we were going to go folk blues, but 
I think that the adding that element made us who we are now. And that's where we are at now with the latest record. It's called time will finally come because it took so damn long. To well, yeah, now, the, the title of the album completely makes sense. Yes. Now that we've spoken to you, I, 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 I want to get your take on something, you know, like the coming from San Francisco and, and being a musician in that scene there. I mean, arguably the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, and a few other bands started the San Francisco sound in the 60s kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think that it kind of evolved over time. I think the Mother Hips have kind of carried on that tradition in a big way. Exactly, um, yeah. What do you think that is that makes the San Francisco sound? What What is that? DistroKid has been the industry standard for getting your newly created music out to the streaming platforms. And now the DistroKid app is now available on iOS and Android. Yeah, check that out. The app is now available on your phone. Go to the app or Play Store and download it. There's so many features inside this app. You, you can do things like sign up and pay for a new DistroKid account. You can upload your new releases there. You can see your DistroKid bank and withdraw your earnings. You even get notified when you've earned royalties and withdraw from the app via push notifications. You can see hyperfollow links. You can edit your account details. You can see your streaming stats from Spotify and Apple. You can even edit and add lyrics to your songs there. So like I said, go over to the App Store on iOS or Android and download the DistroKid app now. Also, they have this new feature called Mixia. I know a lot of artists struggle to be prolific and make their music sound as good as the music they hear from their influences and their peers. That's where Mixia comes in. Nothing's ever going to replace the artistry and expertise of a real human mastering engineer. But for artists who are short on time or resources, Mixia is a powerful tool to help make the music sound great in a hurry. Simple interface empowering the most novice of music creators. It's got unlimited song previews of mastered songs with one free download. And for 99 bucks, you get unlimited mastered tracks. So go check out Mixia and make sure to go to the app store and download the DistroKid app so that you can get your music out there and get it heard. You're doing your thing and they're helping you do it. DistroKid. Um, one of the things is whammy bars. <laughs> it's the tremolo. It's just got that wave in it. You just like, I was, uh, I was showing my guitar to, to John the other day. I just bought a new guitar and, uh, and it had a whammy bar on it. And he started playing with the whammy bar and he's like, I sound good. <laughs> yeah. Sound like Cause from San Francisco. it is. It's that surf thing. Like yeah. Tim's a surfer, like Greg, you know, those guys are like, California born and raised and, and kind of like, you know, they have it in them and it's what it is. It's this like surfy thing mm -hmm. and just being out on the ocean and being in the, like the, the Bay area specifically has like a certain feeling to it. That is just its own thing. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when you hear like California bluegrass, like you can't talk about jam music without talking about bluegrass right. because bluegrass is the other is the other world that we also love and respect, but can't play for shit. <laughs> Me either. It's okay. That's good. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm actually from Tennessee and it's, it's kind of a point of, of contention that I can't play blue. Don't, don't you have to know like seven good. fiddle tunes if you're from Tennessee? Isn't there like a number? I mean, I used to know all that stuff as a kid, but honestly, like it just wasn't, I just wasn't taken to it. I like country music, but I don't like, um, know how to play bluegrass on the level. Like when you hang out with Sully Tuttle and like AJ Lee and all these like California bluegrass people, they're just like, they have their own version of bluegrass yeah, and yeah. it's affected by Dave Grisman, obviously. Right. Right. Dave Grisman is, is the, the jam, the jam band equivalent to bluegrass. Like he is that old and in the way mm -hmm. was to bluegrass. What, what all these bands were to, to jam music. And so it kind of like starts with that kind of vibe of like kind of a looser feel. Right. And a little bit more like laid back than the Southern kind of thing for, for bluegrass. And then for jam music, I don't know what to say because the East coast has equally good jam bands yeah, and equally yeah. good psychedelic music was coming out of the East coast. Right. And then, you know, so 
I don't know how all that works, but I do know that there is like a certain like waviness to California okay. music. Yeah, yeah. That, that totally makes sense. It, it, yeah, you know, it, you know. And life's easy here. If, if, mm-hmm. you, if you know how to live here and you can survive here, financially mostly is what i'm talking about (laughs) yeah like it is a pretty easy life like i'm living with the windows up and i don't have air conditioning and you know like things are pretty like mellow here and people live like well we have good wine good um good weed good weed good um good looking p everybody's good looking it's just like one of those kind of places where everybody's really interesting you know and and, uh my parents my dad's actually like i'm done with tennessee i'm moving back to california oh really he's He's moving back to california because he's just like i can't I can't do this Tennessee life, man. This wow. I gotta be in California. It's my people. <laughs> I think the other Hell thing yeah. that that kind of defines at least the the Bay Area scene now, at least for me, is the the lyrical ability of the bands that are coming out. You guys, who who's the who's the writer? With is it all of you? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a songwriter, so I, I write most of the songs. Okay, like the lyrics. Like, you know, yeah. definitely yeah. writing the lyrics and the chords. Um, what's really cool about that is that, you know, Laura and I have collaborated on a few things. Um, she also writes her own stuff and has her own records. And um, she performs under Laura T. Lewis. And so she's a songwriter. And so she checks me all the time. She'd be like, hey, Chris, you probably shouldn't say that or let's try this. Um, but she's writing all of her own harmonies. The band you know, as far as songwriter royalties and all that, like the band does have a, a say in the songs, right. you know, and they, they have ownership of the song. So there are things in there that I didn't write when I wrote the song. And that's mm. definitely to the, everybody's credit in the band. They all write parts like Will writes these incredible like guitar minis and, you know, harmonic lines and, you know, really catchy hooks. And I think that's, really important to a song so definitely it's a collaborate i mean the band's been very collaborative we okay. definitely collaborate a lot you know so, so it's I, a collective I okay mean, that's how got it feel. you know the music scene has really evolved since i'm sure you started playing like just how people listen to music how people spend money on music what you know all of that stuff what's your hope for the band like with the, how the music scene is now, like where do you want it to go? Where do you hope it goes? Yeah. I mean, everything, we're kind of at a weird place right now. I don't know if are you guys are all in California, right? No, no we're, we're in, in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. You're in Portland. Okay. Okay. So, you know, well, you know about the whole sisters and the, the four peaks and, you know, there, there's festivals have come and gone over the years. Yeah. Hi Sierra. This might be one of the last. This yeah. Might be it. Yeah. Just lost one of their founders and um, and the ticket sales are down. And meanwhile, there's all these other little festivals that are popping up left and right. And oh, it's yeah. like whack-a-mole. You don't know. You may play one next year. It might not be there, you know? So, you know, it's kind of a tough environment right now. I have to say gas and inflation really does affect musicians, but, you know, as Dave Rawlings and Gillian Welch always attest, you know, that it's like, Musicians have always had it hard and they're always really scrappy. So our thing is just be scrappy. Like yeah. we will play uh, what we need to play on the low end. Uh, we don't. So like at this point, we don't have a major record label behind us. And we don't really want that because right now the record labels are, are like kind of, it's not a, it's not a, just a, the door opens for you kind of situation with right. record labels. And it's a huge buy-in. You you end up owing money and you end up having to do things where you compromise. Like, I just would like to keep musical control and still have, um, there we go. That was appropriate. That was definitely appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could rail and complain about Spotify because every day I hear of a new thing going on where the record industry and and Spotify and all these like sources of income are like choking down on artists and making it harder for them to survive. Our bread and butter is going to be playing small festivals for the next few years. Okay. Uh, one thing we did do this year that was really big for us when we released the record, we started playing in our hometown and having like a hometown like draw, like so people come out to see us. So we want to be known in our hometown, but we also 
you know, we're going back to North Carolina and South Carolina again in October. We're going to be um, expanding. Um, we're going to Nevada in a few weeks. We're going, you know, we're spending a lot more time in Tahoe and we'd love to get back up to Oregon. We've been trying. Um, Let's go. And it's just like, basically that's the focus of our life right now. Like make records that sound good that we like to make and continue touring but do it in a way that like makes sense financially because you know i don't think people know this about music but like a lot of musicians are actually losing money constantly yeah. and then we all get together and they just we all it's like hey man your your stuff looks great on instagram and you got so many plays on spotify and they're like yeah can i borrow 50 bucks i'm yeah. broke oh <laughs> shit no i you know what we I didn't. I mean, I knew that it was we, getting tougher and the gas was more expensive and all that. Nobody's, like, I think, bold enough to say it that way, mm -hmm. but it's but definitely it's, inferred. It's underlying. It, it's true. Like nobody, nobody wants to admit that exactly. Yeah. Nobody wants to say I'm broke. I need fifty bucks, but and every, I'm doing this out of the because I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Or yeah. I can't do anything else. This is my life. But even just like doing the numbers, we're not a band, but we have groceries and bills. Like we know how much it's gone up. If we yeah. start adding dates and like trips, I think that we would know that we'd be broke. <laughs> you be know what I mean? Yeah, me so what? like, you know, a band of four or five people needing accommodations, needing food, needing lot, like all that stuff. It's, clearly yeah. seems as you just have to do it, it because you it, love it. It costs a lot to go to these festivals and stuff. Oh, yeah. We have several, and yeah. It, it's like, you know, it costs, well, for three of us, I mean, it's thousands of dollars to go mm -hmm. do these things. And Yeah. Yeah, I will give the the festivals and the venues credit. They're doing a lot more of, like, housing, providing housing. And, you know, we've found innovative ways to do it. It's just the problem is, is, like, I'm not willing to sleep in a bus anymore you know like it's just i mean i would sleep in a sprinter don't get me wrong but yeah. like right. yeah. i'm just saying like i used to like travel with billy we were in a band together <laughs> and we used to literally sleep in a 1960s harvester international school bus <laughs> and we went all around the country and you know that was great when i was in my 20s yes um but it's getting it's getting to the point now where it's like if i'm don't take a shower every few days. It's just like everybody's going to suffer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not having a good time. You know? and, and, and we're not, we're not like hitting it heavy. You know, like everybody's got like, everybody's got some sort of day job. Laura has a child and it's like, so we're in a different situation now. You know who we just played with was um, fruition. We were talking with them. We were just talking Super about nice them folks. yesterday. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful human beings, but also, incredible um archetypes of what it's like to do your own music in your own way completely original music and to make a living at that and i was just talking to them they all live in different places now they've spread out they don't live in portland anymore right and so you know they're just like talking about how they're like flying in for this tour and then they all get in the van and that's more like what we're looking at mm. if we want to be successful we have to be super efficient now like that's just the way everybody's running i bet these big tours they they have like four buses now they're cutting down to three you know like there's people are having to do that in the music business i'm sure just to make the same bottom line because of inflation because of the fact that venues don't seem to want to pay more a lot of times mm -hmm. like i'm getting the same rates that we got a year ago and i'm just like we can't do it for yeah. that you know and it's really hard because we don't want to squeeze them out and we don't want to lose our gig to somebody who's younger and hungrier and willing to do it for less. But that's no. what's always happened in the music business. Yeah. Where, why it's pay to play in L.A. is because there was always, oh, you're not going to do it. Well, there's somebody younger and hungrier than you that'll do it for nothing. And if we reward venues for that, then it hurts musicians. So we Overall. always are fighting back against yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just, this, it's, it's always this ongoing thing of survival, but the road is how we make our money. Hats, t-shirts, merch, records. <laughs> that's how we make our money. People like, I can't tell people enough, like buy a, buy a freaking sticker, like anything like $3 helps me. And, and I don't waste the money. I don't like put the money into like, you know, fancy hotel rooms or nothing. I'm like reinvesting in the band and we treat it like a business. You know, we consult with the manager and have people that 
give us financial talks to like explain to us like this is what you're planning for this is what you're investing in so we're constantly investing wow we pay for our, we paid for our own record our own vinyl yeah. everything comes out of our business so you know unless you have that outside influence coming in that philanthropy yeah. you just have to run a really tight ship so that's what we're doing <laughs> it's it's crazy you know to what? think that's that- called maturity over yeah. you know what i mean like Thank that's you, musical yeah. matu- <laughs> I, I, because well because we interview very young hungry do it for whatever the cost is bands all the way up to you know people that have been playing a, an entire career their whole life and and like still having to kind of figure it out and like you know at a certain point you have to be like okay i am worth this i have to, we have to operate from this up we can't take any less and yeah. there's a lot of like i mean first of all like that's a great place to be as, as a human being like your val you know your value mm-hmm. at this point you know and you're yeah. not going to take less but also you know what's out there you're like okay we can't take less but there is no more out there either <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah that's right so, but i and, uh, i just commend you guys for doing that like you know just doing it reinvesting doing it the mature way doing it the smart way and like being real about it like yeah we're losing money but we're doing what we love yeah, and we're doing it for the long haul. And I wouldn't say we're always losing money. It's just yeah. we're constantly investing. And so there are mm. moments when you will go to an opportunity that doesn't pay a lot and you walk away and be like, hey, there's, you know, this 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 negative dollar amount. And but you know that you went out there and you killed it and you made some new fans and you yeah. you impressed some people. So there is that there's always been that as part of the business. And we always take those. We just have to be careful about what we do. I, I see younger bands and uh, they're going out there and hitting it hard. And I really respect them because I've done that myself. Yeah. And I, and I really admire that they don't have anything to lose. Like they're just going out there and giving their all. Balls like, out. Yep. We're thinking about like longevity. Like I want to be doing this 20 years from now. And that's like, I'm in my forties. So it's like, I really actually am starting to see, you know, the physical, uh, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, side the of, physical of things. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. yeah you that's know, no you joke. can't just go out there and scream every night. <laughs> like you have to plan it. And I talked to, I talked to really great bands. Like I, I remember, you know, if I like, for instance, I'll go see or hang out with the California honey drops. Great example. Mm-hmm. Lesh is one of my favorite singers. He's an incredible vocalist. Uh, I asked him, I said, what do you do? to preserve your vocal cords, you know, and he just gave me some pointers and it really helped me, but it was like also sobering to realize that Lesh doesn't just go out there and Jim Morrison it every night. Like he's actually Mm. like long game in it. Mm. And he actually takes care of himself and actually does invest in his own like product, which is his voice and doesn't burn it out. So you don't end up Axl Rosing yourself. Wow. Right. You know, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is sad to say, cause he was my hero, but he burned his vocal cords out and the guy is not ever going to be able to sing like he did. And I don't want to be like that, you know? And it's like, so we, as musicians, we have to do more to self care, like therapy, yeah. massage, vocal training, like all that boring, nerdy stuff. I'm <laughs> to, finally to doing keep it. you going. Yeah. What was, what was t- 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 eating healthy, sleeping healthy. Yeah. yeah the, that's we interviewed that does the massages and stuff backstage and oh, all that. Um, oh yeah. There is a, Don't. there's a, there's a few different groups that do that. Yeah. Amazing. Damn it. I can't think of her name right now. Um, I'll find her. But anyway, yeah, she has a, a service where like she, she takes care of the musicians and, and, Shows you like ergonomic ways to hold your shoulder if you're a guitar yep. player, so you don't jack your shoulder up, and yep. you know that. I think that that is exactly what Mel's talking about too. Is Lisa Glassman? Lisa Glassman, that's it. Okay, um, ActivePotential.com, and she does stuff for musicians. Also, she has like an app. Like if you're in the bus or doing something, and you mm-hmm. have say a, a creaky neck or whatever, your shoulders bothering you there's like little um like prompts to help you with that in Shows this app you like exercises and and, stuff. and she also posts okay. up at certain um, bluegrass festivals and has a tent and does massages and like wow. little classes like i said for for everybody not just the musicians for anybody who's like part of that you know loading in loading out 
But I think right. people are recognizing that and, you know, wanting to give back to those musicians who fill our cup. You know, know. You, you go out there and you do your hour set. We're on the top of the moon, so starry eyed and happy. And you're schlepping your stuff off back and you're now got a freaking sore back. And you're you know, eating the pizza that's in the green room that's been there yeah. for four and a half yeah, hours. And you're so, going to jump in a van and drive another four hours to the next gig right. and do it all over again. And yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and I, and my biggest thing is like, you know, I've tried and I haven't had success with it, but it would be really interesting to see if there, I know that there are resources for mental health for musicians, but I know almost all the musicians that I know have some sort of <laughs> need. And, uh, you know, <laughs> therapy has helped me immensely to process and write better. Um, but, oh. but also to just be a more, uh, oh. tolerable human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The services like backline and stuff like that. Backline. Are- I, I did look them up and, and, you know, and, and, and I would love to have used their service, but I, I already had it there. Whatever. The point is, is, I think we got to talk about this stuff more. Yeah. I think it's got to be more of the conversation. I think that young musicians um, don't have to worry about it now, but they should at least know that the resources are there for them when they do need it. Because I know a lot of musicians who've got carpal tunnel, um, taking them out of the game for years. You know, like I look at the Doobie brothers, for instance, uh, uh, is it Tom Johnston or whatever? Uh, he, he left the band because he had a hernia or something. Or like oh, wow. a ulcer, a bloody ulcer. Like he didn't take care of himself, and within five years of touring, was done. Oh, he never gosh. really fully recovered. And that's not and even that Michael long. Michael McDonald came in the band. Yeah, you know, it's like, that uh, guy. If he had taken better care of himself, he'd probably still be on the road today. Well, I you know? think part of it too is that when you're younger, you, you don't feel like that. It, it it's ever going to touch you. Like life can't touch you like that. Well, it hasn't oh, compounded yeah. yet. Yeah. The, you know, you yeah. haven't been on the road for years yet and you haven't yeah. eaten like shit for years yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> like these are all cumulative things that happen. And the harder you go in the beginning, the faster you'll catch up to but that. I but will, you still have when you're 26, you can do a, a line and, you know, get back beers and then wake up Maybe looking too. cute again. Like it yeah, somehow happens. I will say though that the, the <laughs> I, for the most part, the younger cats that we've spoken to mm-hmm. have paid attention. Yeah. There's a lot of to the horror there. stories yeah. of their idols. And, and you know what our, I've seen is a lot of um, mentorship in, mm, yes. in yeah, the but, jam and bluegrass communities. Like, you know, the Tuttles, uh, their dad is, you know, uh, a famous teacher there at Griffin Music and has taught dozens of musicians how to be not just play your instruments, but how to live this life and do it for a long time and how to have a good head on your shoulders. When I was a kid, my teacher was a heroin addict. Um, he, was, he was living with his mom, with his kids, and you know, I didn't know this at the time, but he had, you know, he was playing at like blues bars with a drum machine. Like he wasn't, he wasn't like doing well. And I don't know what happened to him. I tried to find him. I can't find him. Um, but it's like to have had someone that had been in the music industry for years that survived it to be able to, to now those people are now investing in their, literally their children, but also other children. Right. Um, I'm looking at the, the work ethic coming out of the young guys like Asher and, uh, is it Belsky or in, in uh, Taz and those guys, Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. you know, I mean, they, like that kid, he's already like on the level of like a 30 year old and his, his thought processes and the way he's approaching the business and having that maturity at that young of an age must be so empowering because we had no idea when we were kids. Yeah. No, my heroes were all dead. Yeah. They've been able to see (laughs) like, like you were saying, like they've been able to see their idols and stuff. Another good example is Billy strings. Yeah. Like when we talked to, he he already learned his lesson years ago about, I can't drink. I got to be on my game. I got to take care of myself and coming from a family too, where drug abuse was in there. And then yeah. recently, when when uh, was it, it was dogs in a pile, uh, it was good to see. I met out in the smoking area a guy that's from uh, California, and when they come out on the West Coast, he's 
friends with the family. He's in his, mm-hmm. fi- I'm 55, and I think he was right around my age. And he f- jumps on the tour for the whole West Coast so that the family knows somebody's keeping an eye out on the, you know, on these younger guys. Right. And we hear from all these younger bands, like all the local bands we know and stuff, that, they- they all started like five, six years ago and they're already talking and they're already trying to stay healthy and do oh, yeah. these things. They're, they're learning. They got, they got, yeah. there's a lot of people to I'm, learn from. I'm 52. I'm barely figured it out. Well, well we're a little slower. <laughs> we're a little slower. <laughs> but see, that's our generation. Like I'm, I kind of feel like I am part of that generation Yeah. of like hard living. Like I grew up, you know, with the smoke in my mouth. Uh, you know, I, my first job was in a, a salami factory. Like, <laughs> like I've worked, I've been a janitor. I've been, you know, I've, I've like parked cars. I've cleaned aquariums, but I never like ever thought that I have to take care of myself. And then you see people around, you start getting sick yep. and start yeah. things happening and, you know, but it was like, so I didn't actually start working on myself until my late thirties. And you know, I can imagine, and I've, and, but I've seen the younger generation just knock it out of the park. Like, I'm really proud of all the younger Same. musicians yeah, I man. meet because I'm like, man, you guys are making me feel like, like I missed out. Like, I would have loved to have had, grown up in this world that you're in now, and well, even though it's chaos on the outside. Yeah, uh, the music <laughs> world alone is very nurturing, and and I am seeing a lot of like really cool stuff. And as far as like help helping each other and the nashville scene is another one i gotta point out yeah the nashville Mm -hmm. scene has done an immense job of helping themselves their community and they do really really well at working together to prosper they're not pitted against each other yeah Uh, that's um, yeah i'm really impressed with nashville like i i don't i don't live out there anymore and i and i never actually lived in nashville i was always just like i've lived in la i've lived in new york i've lived in atlanta I live in San Francisco and I was just like, Nashville's just going to be like that, but it's not now. It's like, I wish I, I almost wish I'd you know here. what though, man, the Portland music scene is yeah. like that too. The, the all the bands it that is. we know here are help each other and root for each other and at each other's shows. And it's a big community of people that are, Sitting in, it's rotating cast. Yeah, if folks, somebody's not feeling good. You have a bunch. Yeah, of, you have a, it's ten guitarists dope. to fill in. You, know, you the, all know each other. The music scene's yeah. been needing an overhaul for a really long time, and I yeah. think technology has kind of like sped that overhaul up. And it's kind of cool that we're talking about this because I think that not only the musicians but the fans see that brokenness in the music world and and they want to fix it there's people that do and are kind of willing to fix it so maybe just having the conversations like you were just saying more often and more raw so that people can actually know what the needs are sometimes if you don't know what the needs are you're not inclined to help because you don't have you don't know well and and if you don't know what to do i mean chris said it earlier the best thing you can do for the musicians that you love is go see them live and buy some merch when you're yeah. there. That that's, yeah. I mean, simple. pretty simple, man. And like we always say to you, buy, buy the pre, pre-sell tickets. Pre-sell tickets, yeah. Don't wait. Want to go? Yeah, yeah, don't wait till the day of at the door. Well, yeah, <laughs> people love to buy their tickets at the last minute. Yeah, or say, hey, can you get me on the guest list? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can. One. I can get somebody on the guest list, but it's it's you know it's it's one of those things where it's not the biggest problem in the world. But and because I'm not a famous person, but I can imagine being a very well respected musician, it must be terrifying to then have to reveal weakness. Oh you my know? God. I mean, when you get these people like like for instance, Chuck Prophet got cancer a couple years back. I mean, what a brave guy to just go out there and talk about it. Like I know other musicians who've had physical stuff and they don't say anything. Like he, musicians are terrified of piercing that kind of image that people have of them. And so it does feel like this kind of like delicate relationship you have with your audience where it's like, I don't want to be too real because then I feel like my barrier, my boundaries yeah. are, you know, kind of crossed and people know this all about my personal life. And when you're out there in the public, your personal life is your most sacred thing that you, 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 you know, like if you really know musicians, like if you know them like really, really well, there's 
you're very lucky because very few musicians actually let people in that closely to their personal lives. Right. And it's, it's very hard to do that. And the best one of all time is Willie Nelson, because he makes you feel like he's giving you that, but you don't really know Willie Nelson. You don't know Willie. But, yeah. but you feel like you do. I mean, yeah. it makes you feel like you do. The other one I got to <laughs> give credit to is Trey Anastasio from fish, man. He went through, yeah, yeah. he went through, a huge public Night, nightmare public yeah. embarrassment of like yeah. getting arrested and being high and all that shit and fucking just owned it and was like yeah i was addicted to everything and i got clean and he now he's sober yeah yeah he's sober and he's he just opened a treatment facility in vermont and like oh really yeah it's been open for a little bit yeah, yeah. so you know that it i think that the what we were talking about earlier uh, the way that the music business is now with Spotify and all of that, I feel like that thing has made the local communities have to pull in tighter to help each other. And yeah. so, so maybe that's like the, the light in that shitty pile that's there. That's the good that's coming out of it. And, and if that's the thing that I'm, I'm stoked because I know that music is one of the most important things in my life. And to see, the musicians that I love going through hell or not able to tour because their head isn't right. That's not what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. um, Chris, where, where can folks go to, to find out yeah. more and support you guys? Uh, the first place I send you is our website. So Wolf jet is all one word on the web. Uh, it's a, not all one word. Wait, Wolf J E T T. So it's two T's at the end. Mm -hmm. It says wolfjet.com. Okay. And that's my family name. My mom's name was Joan Jet growing up. And then she married my dad. Um, so that is a tribute to my grandfather, Rollin Jet from Breathitt, Kentucky. And um, so yeah, so that's that's where the J E T T comes in because a lot of people get that wrong. So okay. wolfjet.com, wolfjet music on Insta, face grant, face. Graham, yeah, whatever uh, the book is, the, the yeah. thing, <laughs> Twitter threads, all that stuff. It's just all Wolf Jet music, one word. Um, that's our user profile, and uh, <laughs> and that's how you get in touch with us. And uh, you know, if you sign up on our mailing list, we'll tell you when we're coming to town. Um, like I said, we're mostly California, but we do plan to get back up to Oregon and and out to Idaho and and uh, Utah and all those places soon. Maybe Colorado. Dope. When uh, well, I, I I can't wait. We can't wait to see you live. I just said that the new album is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Thanks. Every every single every song on it. And then this morning I was just watching to the uh, it was in, towards the end of twenty three. It's the one that's up there. The full at, at the Gilded Theater. Oh, the watching Guild. It, By the, the way, Guild yeah, Theater. The Guild. That was it's such a good show. Holy shit, man! Thanks. Thanks. When you yeah. uh, when you all come up to Portland, man, we'll uh, you guys could s stay here at the house with us. Just keep oh, my cool. number and stay in touch, brother. Yeah. I'm glad we met. We lo we love yeah, to thanks host. Thanks so much. It's great to meet you all, Mel, Apple, and Aaron. Thank you. Right on. I appreciate you. Right on, Chris. Chris I'll let same. you know when this Rock is coming on. out. It'll yeah. be right it'll on, be a couple Chris. weeks, man. I'll let you know when it comes out. Say hi to Billy for us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll do. Later, brother. <laughs> Take care. Aww. That's just good California people Sweetie. right there. Uh-huh. That was a great that was a great conversation getting to know. I mean, I feel like we really got to know him yeah. quite oh, yeah. well from uh, the, he looks like if Paul Hoffman and John Fishman had a kid, he looks like both of them. All right. <laughs> well, we always say like, like a little, little he's, got, he's got that classic look, a little bit of Derek Trucks, a little bit of Anders, uh, like uh, I like I like that like the I, band is born out of all this adversity. Oh, they went through complete chaos from the time. Well, they did that. The first album is like so sweet and it's more sweet and subtle. And two, you can tell on the second album, they've been it, through it some makes shit. sense that they, they went through shit because it got more rock rockier and in your face. And, and, and like he was saying, the producer that helped them out, there's a whole lot more, jam like when he said we're not a jam it's like it's like well, you're not but you can do it man I mean, yeah. that guilt wink, that wink, show at the nudge. guild theater they're, they're out of all, all of us here you can do it yeah. yeah they're all taking their turn wow uh, billy 
Kramer, man. Thanks we for love you, sending Billy. Wolfjet our way, brother. And yeah. uh, we miss you. And um, send our love to you and Diana and the, the, and whole, the kitties. The, and the, the kitties. The furry family you have down there, man. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody, if you're in California and, and Wolfjet comes through, go get your tickets, buy the merch, buy the sticker, buy the shirt. Go say hi. Tell them you... You heard them on No Simple Road, and you came out to see them because you and thought buy they were that awesome. sticker. Yeah, the socks, whatever they're selling, the sock, buy something. The coffee yeah. mug, <laughs> coasters, the board game, whatever. That's, that's, how, that's you how you know support. What? Also, when you go to a show, musicians still accept tips, even if there's not a tip jar. Their I merch that might be weird. Their merch, no. Uh, if some, if you're playing music and somebody just hands you twenty bucks. That's not going to be. I've, I've seen Thank that at shows several times where they're up there and they're they're like tearing down. They got the guitar case open. Yeah, go up and throw. I've seen it. Okay, yeah. like, All right, never mind. I take it back. It's not weird. Same yeah. with us. See yeah. us out there and about. Throw you some can throw money, money at us. We'll, 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 we'll very much <laughs> totally we'll, take. It. We'll really appreciate it mm-hmm. and hang out. <laughs> totally. I, I'll be like, thank you, and Same put it right in my us. pocket. All right, everybody. Uh, we will be back on Monday with another edition of the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind. Rewind. And, and until then, Rewind. please take care of each other. Smile at a stranger safety third. Hydrate. And listen to Wolf Jet music. That's right. We love you all. Peace. Hi, this is Henry Kay, host of the number one music history podcast, Rootsland. Come with me on a journey to Kingston, Jamaica, where we explore the world of reggae music and the untold stories of some of the genre's greatest legends. From the ghettos and tenement yards where the music was born to the island's iconic recording studios. We are so excited to team up with Osiris Media, the leading storyteller in music, because as you'll hear, sometimes the story is the best song.